Welcome back. Today I'd like to talk to you about the first and second derivative tests. And uh, so we need to start with the definition. And we need the definition of what it means for a function to be strictly increasing and strictly decreasing. So let's talk about it for a second. What it means for a function to be strictly increasing on an interval is that the functional value of x1 is always less than the functional value of x2 if x1 is less than x2. So let me draw a quick picture of this. So um, let's say we have a function that looks something like this. And you can notice that as I go from the left side to the right side, this thing is going upward. It never goes down. Now at this one point it seems to be flat, uh, but it never is going down. And the way to think about this is if this is x1 and this is x2, I, it doesn't really matter where I draw x1 and x2 on this graph as long as x1 is less than x2, then the functional value of x1 is less than the functional value of x2. If that's the case, then we say that the function is strictly increasing. Similarly, what does it mean for the function to be strictly decreasing? It means that if you're reading the graph from left to right, it's going down, not up. Okay, so we always read graphs from <clears throat> the left to the right. So if I have an x1 here and I have an x2 here, the functional value of x1 now is always bigger than the functional value of x2. So this graph we would say is strictly increasing. And over here, this graph is strictly decreasing. All right, so um, if, if we're always going up from left to right over an interval or on a function, it's strictly increasing, always going downward, strictly decreasing. And another definition now that we can add on is that we call a function monotonic if it's either strictly increasing or strictly decreasing on an interval. So if it's always the same thing on that interval, then we call it a monotonic function on that interval. Let's talk about the monotone, uh, the monotone function theorem. All right. Uh, so the monotone function theorem is a different way of thinking about what it means to be strictly increasing and strictly decreasing. So let's read it together. The monotone function theorem says that if f is differentiable on the open interval a, b, in other words, it has a derivative, uh, and if the derivative is always positive on that interval, then we can conclude that it's strictly increasing on the interval. Okay, so going up translates to having positive derivatives or increasing means you have positive derivatives. And that's not so surprising when you think about the tangent lines that are associated with something that's moving up from left to right. They're all positive slopes. And similarly, if uh, the derivative is always negative on that interval, then we say that f is strictly decreasing on that interval. Okay, So if you have a bunch of negative slopes, then you're going down. How this helps us out a lot is the goal here is we're really trying to find local and relative extrema in this section. So we're trying to find where are local maximums and where are local minimums, or where are the hills, where are the valleys. And how we do that, one way we can do that is with what we call the first derivative test. Okay, the first derivative test is quite powerful for finding these local maxes and mins, and there are really two steps to the process. First step is you find all the critical values of your function. Okay, so how do you find critical values? You take a derivative and you find where is that derivative equal to zero or where is that derivative undefined. Uh, we did that in the last section. So once you've done that, then you actually kind of make a number line, put all of your critical values on that number line, and then test points in between your critical values to see do you get positive values or do you get negative values. And I'll show this in some of the examples that are following. 
So test some points in between, see if it's positive or negative. And then if from moving from left to right, you move from a positive derivative value to a negative derivative value when you move over a critical value C, then what that's giving you is a local maximum. If you go from negative to positive, then it's giving you a local minimum. And if there's no change in sign, then neither of those is true and you don't have a local min or a local max. So if we can take the first derivative and find these critical values, then just plugging in some points in between the critical values to see if it's positive or negative in between will help us to determine whether those critical values are local maxes or mins. And we will get all the local maxes and mins. So that's a very nice uh, test for finding local max and mins. Like I said, in the homework that's following this, I'll go through some examples of doing this process so you can see it in practice. Our next definition um, is about concavity, is what we would call it. And we can talk about a function being concave up or concave down. And the way that I like to think about concavity is concavity is the way that the function bends. So are you bending up? or are you bending down? In terms of like position, velocity, and acceleration, which direction is the particle or whatever is traveling accelerating? Is it accelerating up or accelerating down? And remember, just because you're moving down doesn't mean you're not accelerating up. So if you think of a bar, let's say I had a thin bar and I start bending that bar upward, then the bend is up on both sides. So it's bending up and it's concave up the whole way. If I bent that bar down, the bar is bending downward. So we would say that it's concave down. Now you can also have a graph where pieces of the graph are concave up, pieces of the graph are concave down, but what we're really talking about here is which way is the graph actually bending or its concavity. Okay, so what this definition tells us is what it means to be concave up is that the second derivative is positive. So if along an interval you have a positive derivative, a second derivative, then we say that that interval is concave up. Similarly, if the second derivative is negative over an interval, then we say that that is concave down. Now, just like when we moved from positive to negative or negative to positive, in terms of the first derivative, we found local max and mins. There's a similar piece for testing moving from positive to negative on the second derivative. And that is we can test to find inflection points. Okay, uh, so an inflection point is a place where you switch concavities. So you're either going along with a positive concavity and then you switch to a negative concavity at the point where the switch is made from a positive to a negative concavity, we call that an inflection point. All right, uh, let's move over here. And we have another test for relative or local maxes and mins. So remember I kind of told you the point of this whole section is we'd like to be able to locate these places where we have local maxes and local minimums. So kind of the hills and the valleys of the graph, so to speak. This is another way to test for it. We have the first derivative test uh, where we find critical points, we plug them on a number line, test points in between, that's the first derivative test. The second derivative test is a little bit different. We still have to find the critical values, just like we did before in the first derivative test, we just do a different thing with those critical values. And what we do is we plug the critical values that we find into the second derivative. Okay, And once we plug it into the second derivative, three things could happen. Either we get a positive number, a negative number, or zero. If we get a positive number, then we have a local minimum. And that's kind of confusing sometimes that positive gives you a minimum. It kind of feels like positive numbers should give you a maximum, but it doesn't. Because what does a positive second derivative mean? We just saw over here that that means that it's concave up. 
things that are concave up kind of look like this. And on that graph over there that I just drew, do I have a minimum showing up or do I have a maximum showing up? Well, right down here at the bottom, I've got a minimum. Okay? So positive concavity creates minimums. And just the same, a negative concavity or bending down will create a maximum at a critical value, possibly, okay? So if the concavity is positive at a critical value, we get a minimum. If the concavity is negative at a critical value, you get a maximum. And if the concavity is zero, then the test fails. And what do I mean by the test fails? It means you can't tell if it's a max or a min. It still could be one of them. You just don't know. It doesn't mean it's nothing. It means I don't know, and I need to go back and use some other method to figure out if it's a maximum or minimum or nothing. Typically, what we'd go back and do is, well, if this turns up from the second derivative test, just use the first derivative test. So I think we're at a place now where we're ready to do some problems and actually see the first and second derivative test in action.